Hello there. Welcome back to the React Masterclass by my project ideas. And today we are going to see how to call APIs inside of the React JS. So we will going to see these topics. What are the promises and async await and how to handle the APIs inside React JS. We will also follow up the read and write operations with JSON placeholder API, which is an uh, API or a testing API to call data or to post data. And uh, we will also discuss what are the other libraries to use and handle APIs. So what are the promises and async of it? So I will say that I assume that you are learning React.js, then you should know the core JavaScript concepts. So promises and async await are two of them. Both are used to handle the APIs and other asynchronous or dependent stuff inside the React 2. Promises are used to execute the code blocks. Just after a certain code block is executed, then only the next code block will be executed. Otherwise, all will get stopped. But uh, the conditions are not similar inside the async of it. It is uh, just a simpler syntax. And for the same purpose, we use the async await, uh, just like the promises, but in a different syntax way, which make it more simpler. So asynchronous programming, programming means that we will receive a response until the response is received. The code dependent on the response will not be executed, but the other code will get executed. So let's just see what are the promises and async of it. So if you are going to use the promises, then there are chances that you are going to be stuck in a callback hell because uh, callback hell is a simple JavaScript problem in which you are nesting function inside function, I mean promises function specifically inside each other. So the code becomes very dirty and ugly. So to keep it simple, we will go with the async await syntax here. Uh, actually, I don't have any preference. Uh, you can use whatever you want to use. Now I will, uh, I will, we will see how to call an API or read data from an API. So let's just define a function that will call the JSON placeholder API with async await and fetch API, which is uh, by default provided in the JavaScript. Okay, so now it's time for us to see the practical one. So I am inside the app.jsx of my project. Okay, let me remove the unnecessary things. And also this use effect will be there because we will need that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to define a use effect hook. And which will be like, uh, set a callback function with dependency A. This will be empty, make sure. So now I want to make a function for an API call. And which will be an error function absolutely but it will be async okay so inside that i will have a try and catch block try and catch we will catch an error which we will be console.log fine and inside of the try block i will say const response await fetch and inside this fetch we will use json placeholder api but what is that okay i'm on to the json placeholder.tipicode.com and i will just pick up this to do's uh, it will just written a list of a to-do list item or maybe a to-do list particular item which id is one so i will just post this url here response and then i will say data equal to await response dot json we want to convert it into the json and after that we will console log the data and make sure to call this fetch data function inside the use effect on first render okay let me call it here 
So whenever this app.jsx is first rendered, then this fetch data function will be called. It's very simple to understand. Uh, currently, we are not displaying anything. That's why uh, we will display the data here, but we are not displaying anything to check if the API is working correctly or not. Now let me run my app. Okay, it's already running. Now let's just go to this one and refresh this. Okay, nothing will appear here. I will just check the console. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we are getting an object with a title, user ID, ID, and completed. Very simple, right? Now let's just go to our code. Now I will say a use effect or a use data, which is data set data, which will be equal to use state and which will initially be null okay or okay fine so conditionally we will have a dynamic code block here and said that we will check if data is there then what we will do is we will have a div okay a div tag and inside that div tag we will have a heading and paragraph actually there is a no nothing like body here i will say user id and i will type it here user id which will be equal to this and this is title okay and uh, what should happen if there is no data i will say i will say uh do no data is available Okay, I think we are fine. Now, if we just see the UI, no data is available. Okay, let me refresh this thing. Still, no data is available. I don't know why. Okay, let me tell you why. Because this data is still null. We are not setting the data. So, we will just call the set data function here. And now it will be okay. As you can see, title is a title is this which we are getting it from api and the user id is one it's very simple to call a uh, get api or fetch the data from an api like this and suppose like if you want to uh, post or delete data what should happen then i will show you in the uh, okay i will show you that in the next part as you can see we are using the fetch method to call the json placeholder api to get the data let's see what is happening inside the get data function so first all the get all get data function is called during uh, the first render inside the user pack inside the function we get the data as a response and then convert data from json format to javascript format and now we can use this data inside the jsx it's very simple So we have already seen like what is the read operation with the fake data API by sending the get request to it. Now we will see how to do a post request or send data body to the API by sending a post request to it. We will also use the same method for the post request too, but just passing an object body inside the fetch method. So this object mod body is also called payload. Still we will use the async await approach for this particular one and uh, we will also see this in practical okay now so it's time for us to see the other methods also and uh, we are going to see the post method now so let's just make an error function like uh, uh, post data which will be an error function and inside that we will have a try and catch block again try and catch no, it's not dyr try okay and catch and inside this catch block we will console log e e is what error simply the error and let's see let response equal await um, don't forget it to make it async and just after that, I will say fetch. So the URL for uh, the JSON placeholder 
post is just posts okay so i will just paste it here and okay it's a double quotes and inside there will be an object and here we will uh, specify the method which method as the copilot is all already suggesting post method and we also want to have a body json dot stringify and inside of this there will be an object so this is what we call a payload and inside that we will have a title which is uh, hello instead of foo and body which is word and user id equal to one actually i can say the user id is thousand because it is already registered so i am just showing it to you on this uh, explanation purpose because when i try to create a post inside this placeholder api it doesn't really create a post it doesn't really create this uh, data inside the server it just written the created data but it doesn't really create so it's just a fake version so i am uh, doing this because uh, i can explain the post method through this so let us see okay let result equal await response dot json okay something is wrong here what is wrong parsing error okay i don't know what is let's go with the const what is the problem here okay okay we are inside of uh, this response now uh, so th this will be problematic okay now it's good so the let will be correct and now i will i just want to console dot log result okay and i want to show if this result is successful alert that data posted successfully okay so now to post the data we also want a button some button or something like that button and inside the button post uh, random data okay and we will uh, define the on click functionality here which is post data simple nothing much to uh, worry about it's very simple by clicking on a button we will call this post data function which will post this particular item into the server okay let's just see the practical okay my project is already running and uh, here we are so let me refresh if i click on the post random data data posted successfully and if i check the console it is its value is logged like uh, this one you can see id 101 okay i don't know why this is happening but uh, this is returning it's on app.jsx line number 30 and we are also on app.jsx line number 30 this is the result okay we can just have data posted successfully okay and now we can check i can refresh I click on this one data posted successfully here you can see the data posted successfully with id 101 and it's great okay so similarly like the post methods there can also be delete method and update methods so inside of the update method you already know like uh, there are two methods put and patch so i generally recommend to the uh, recommend to pass the resource instead of put because in the put we have to put the whole body again then and the previous body is replaced by the new body but in the patch resource uh, the only particular uh, field will be replaced not the whole body and inside of the delete method it will be like uh, just passing the delete and the post number it will be very simple so now let's just uh, make a delete function also const delete post which will be absolutely async await 
and uh, inside of this let me make it try and catch block catch which will be error and console log e very simple and inside the stripe log i will say like uh, let res equal await fetch so which post i want to delete the post number one and as the co-pilot is suggesting that method will be delete inside the object which is passed as a second argument for this fetch function now let's just console dot log data deleted successfully and the result it's very simple and we can also have an alert data deleted successfully so when do we call this function yeah we will call this function similarly like uh, the post random data we will uh, call this function here delete post and instead of post here delete random data or delete data we can say currently it is not dynamic it is just we are deleting only the post number one it will not actually delete the post inside the server because uh, this api doesn't allow this but uh, we will get the idea how to delete any other thing you can do it on your own api or the api particularly which you are using okay so let's just see okay now the delete data button is here let me refresh okay if i click on delete data data deleted successfully and you can see this is a response uh, for deleted data okay i think i have i'm forgetting something let the result which is await res.json and instead of res we will console log result simply now try that again if i click on uh, delete data data deleted successfully okay nothing is coming up inside this nothing will come up so because this api is not sending back any data it's, it's just deleting it because we are successful that we can see this alert and uh, this console log here in our console so that's how a delete function will work so that's it for now now you know how to handle the api requests and responses and there are further types of requests too but if you practice then rest is quite intuitive to figure out here are some of the libraries to handle the api so most famous are axios stack react query and apollo client actually this apollo client is specific to the graphql apis not uh, the G, uh, rest apis so i will recommend using axios or simply fetch because axios uh, solves two problems like uh, you don't have to uh, go into the depth of uh, the dirty syntax that fetch api provides and also you don't have to parse the JSON body to the JavaScript object each time. Uh, access to it automatically. So congratulations for reaching here now. Now you know how to handle the APIs and fetch data from the server inside the React JS. Thank you, and I'm very excited to see you in the next video.